Okay, I wanted to show you what I was talking about with these threads. I can't remember if I filmed this before or not, but here's the uh, adjustable threads. So you can see I've got it on the furthest towards the back of the truck setting. So what I'm going to do is just unscrew these, move them over one, test fit that, and then we'll go from there. So anyways, pretty cool little feature. So Okay, so we're finally in. What I actually had to do was, you know, like I said earlier, I had... Um, see if I can get it so the corner of this plate right here I it, there's a thread right at the back and I had that all the way over here to move this thing forward or to the rear of the truck and so I had to move that back two slots okay it actually fits um, pretty good even with this line I would still definitely recommend if you're running into the issue that I had where they're rubbing Put that piece of hose around it but it's really not pushing on it too bad um, the only other thing that I'm kind of concerned about is the battery and I, I did a little look in, in the actual recommended battery for my truck because I can't remember these are cheap old batteries and they're actually uh, about ready to be uh, replaced so I'm gonna put me some die-hard uh, platinums in there instead of these things but I wasn't sure if these were actually smaller than normal ones. Um, actually, you know, looking at this side, it looks a little better. So, but yeah, they're actually the right size, so I should be okay, but you'll see once I get the batteries back in, or battery back in this side, that this terminal here is really close to this, especially with the uh, metal piece uh, right here. So, all right. So I got the, I've got, Yeah, I got the, the turbo boost tube, whatever those are called, CAC tubes or something. I got that installed, so it's good to go. Um, and I put the oil uh, feed tube in. And I, I need to bolt that in. That's what I'm working on right now. So I was going to kind of yak while I do this and film. Yak and film. Okay. And I'm going to mention this on the forums. I think there's been like a couple other people that have posted that I've that I've seen, but I you know I don't look for this stuff um, all the time. But I know a couple other people have installed this kit, uh, but the comments were kind of minimal. It was mostly on the performance of it, not you know the install. So I'll definitely say I like the kit, the design, and everything is pretty good. However. It is definitely not a bolt in like I or a bolt on like I said a few minutes ago it, you definitely have to put some work into this um, the main thing I would definitely stress is looking over all the parts and making sure they're clean uh, I actually when I forgot to mention probably when I cracked open my coolant filter of all things I mean there was all kinds of junk in that thing um, it had it looked like you know when they either polished you know something in there or I'm not sure what it was but it had a bunch of aluminum you know like sand grit and that that definitely is not good in the you know coolant so I just you know that and I showed a video one of my previous videos of the um, where it looked like they had machined that elbow um, ah, freaking mosquito where they had machined up this elbow right here and if you get this kit with this thing you definitely gotta check this piece this had huge flakes of aluminum just kind of uh, barely stuck on there you know all I had to do is kinda grind at them a little bit with a screwdriver a couple times and they came off but you know I mean it's, it's an expensive kit and you know I, I was hoping a little bit more for a straight up bolt in hassle free but this is I mean it you know it's just like this thing it took me a few tries to get this thing right which you know at first I man it did not look like it was gonna fit I would definitely recommend taking the battery out too um, coolant filter was really easy uh, the main thing is just make sure you don't go too tall on this or you'll hit your hood um, and definitely don't over torque these bolts that's what it says in the directions because uh, they'll just strip that metal right out so 
Uh, oh, and I'm not sure yet if I'm happy with the stainless steel hoses. That's what we're just about ready to find out. I gotta make sure everything else is all plugged up good, ready to rock and roll. And um, I'm gonna check that. So, actually, you know what? Oh, and I did get some hose clamps for the return, so I'll, I'll do that real quick. So, I'll get all that stuff ready and then I'll come back. Okay, so uh, I got the hose already ran down here you know from earlier so what we're gonna do is just tap in right here somewhere with this little funky t-fitting thing that they've got so uh, let's go ahead and start cutting again if you do screw up that hose is replaceable so you don't have to be super paranoid about it but less cussing and frustration you get, you know, that's always good. This may leak a little bit. Yeah, not too bad. Try to hold this side up a little bit. Oh yeah, that's gonna leak. Alright. Guess I'll just do this real quick by hand. You know, I probably should have cut that other side. See, I got those clamps. Let's see, so... Okay, so it's just gonna hook in like this. See, this is another thing I was kind of a little bit disappointed about. You know, they get you all this nice stuff like this piece is aluminum. You know, it's gonna last a long time. And then they give you that plastic T over on the other side. It's just kind of, you know, I wish it was all all metal. grab this extra that I just cut off so I don't forget it and melt it. Trying to get all these hoses on to where they're not going to leak if I let this down. So... So, all right, cool, well, that was simple. So, there it is. So your existing line, and then there's the return from the oil cooler. So, all right, I'm gonna tighten that stuff up, and we'll start on the next piece. Okay, here's the final update. Well, just about. So, got everything installed, finally. So, got the battery in here, let me change the light around. this okay there she is so one thing I was worried about was how close it was to the battery terminal it is pretty close but um, it's not as bad as what it what I thought it was going to be so I think we're all good there um, got these lines installed and if you do order this kit just note that one hose is longer than the other <laughs> and the longer hose goes on the bottom here and on the bottom one there because it's in the back it runs further so when you get done they should be pretty close to each other you know in length um, so I had them reversed and it looked really stupid so before I tightened them all down <laughs> that's why I did a test fit um, another thing I found that I'm not really a fan of you can see I had to do my little heater hose trick here on this AC thing because it's actually kind of wedged in here between this turbo boost tube going to the intercooler uh, so I'm hoping actually you know what yeah it's touching right there at the edge I was gonna say it may not even be touching but what I can do is take a piece of that hose and put some um, RTV silicon or something on it stick it to the turbo the boost tube here uh, that way it's rubbing on both rubber which is what I put on this uh, AC line uh, and then rubber over here instead of the metal because I you know if you think about it the only reason anybody would do this kit to their truck is if they plan to keep it for a while I don't know anybody that would be dumb enough to buy this and then post this thing for sale or something online that, that is a lot of work um, 
And don't get me wrong, I, I wasn't expecting this to be a walk in the park. You know, I knew I had to pull all this crap out. And this makes, let's see, first time I did it, I replaced just replaced the EGR cooler, not knowing any better. Um, the second time I plugged it, or blocked it off, and then the third time, head gaskets and studs, because it was so bad that when I'd pull up in my driveway, it would just start dripping uh, coolant off towards the back of the engine, and I knew what it was, because I knew it was going to need head uh, gaskets bad, so, <laughs> and then this makes number four, so, and the final, unless, man, and I tell you, something very catastrophic better go on for the next time for me to get into this freaking motor, but... Anyway, so I, I knew there was going to be some work, but man, I tell you, just getting the battery in, oh man, that was a chore. So, I was worried about it too, um, which what I had to do was take this terminal, flip the little uh, insulator thing upside down and kind of pull it and set it right here on top of this, kind of out of the way with one hand and then shimmy the battery in with the other, but we finally got it in there. Um... One thing you, one thing I did do was the way that this works, and it's really the only way you could do it is um, you spin this cap on, and you want to have this little lock ring that they've got. Let's see if I can get a picture of it. So this ring right here, it's actually it spins free of this, or you know it's threaded onto this. And the idea is you spin this thing on this top cap and get it where you need it and then you lock that thing down so it doesn't move and it has an o-ring in there so it won't leak you don't need it to be tight super tight just enough so that it doesn't spin around um, so what I did was I screwed the cap in all the way and it mine actually when I if I go a whole nother turn it'll actually uh, be pointing about right here which won't work because it's I need it in the back further it's kind of hard to see it's dark outside but so what I did is just backed it off one turn, got my hoses all hooked up. Um, one thing you got to be careful about back here. Oh, you know what? Uh, let me check mine. Oh, yep, mine's hitting. Oh, I don't have it tight. Uh, come on, mate. Help me out here. So, see, this thing spins, and so I don't have that thing tight enough. But you got to make sure that you don't have it. Um, if you just let it spin freely, the little. Uh, wire for the VGT solenoid back there will uh, the hose will push against that and I'm sure that'll wear out pretty quick so you don't want that to happen so that's something I'm gonna have to do they send you this little little tool uh, where did I put it here it is so they send you this tool you get this little piece uh, not the socket that's in my hand but you get this little hook, and you can see how it works. You just put a socket in it, and then you crank it, you know, to tighten her up. And it worked pretty good. It's definitely a two-handed job, and you got to stretch all the way across the motor. It's kind of a pain, but you know, it works. So, um, the only thing stopping me, two things stopping me from firing her up right now. I got to get a plug for that damn hole, and I cannot find anything. I can't find. I was even going to buy an oil temperature uh, sender just to plug it. You know, it looks stupid, but I need, I wanted something that way I could start it. I mean, I can't drive this thing until I get that plugged. And it's not a standard. It's not a metric thread. It's not a fine thread. It's not a coarse thread. It's not a pipe thread. I don't know what that thing is. So, I'm going to email Vince tonight with IPR, and hopefully he can get me one quick. Because I'll be ready to drive this thing tomorrow. The only other thing stopping me is... I need some more distilled water for my coolant. So, other than that, man, got everything in. Uh, I spent probably, mm, let's see, so what, what all did I do today? I got the turbo tubes and stuff on tonight. I only probably spent an hour and a half or two. I spent probably three hours running around town trying to look for that friggin' bolt. So, well, anyways, um, that's where we're at now. Uh, so one thing I would imagine I'm going to have to do, so, and, and you'll have to take this into consideration too, when you first fill this thing up, it's probably going to use more than 
15 quarts, which is, I believe, what's stock or standard. So I put 16 in it, uh, 4 gallons, and I'm going to let it sit, obviously, right now, but then I'm going to check it. And I'm actually going to fill it up over full just a little bit because whenever the engine starts, it's got to pump that oil through here, fill up all this crap. Um, and I'm sure that's going to be at least a couple quarts. So I may actually have to buy another gallon. Um, but then your standard oil changes should be fine because that oil will actually sit in these tubes when you turn the truck off. So, uh, let's see what else. Um, and same for the coolant. So, uh, now you've got even way more, or I have way more coolant hose, you know, again, because the return comes in underneath the bottle, comes around here in the front, goes over here to the cooler. Actually, I'm going the opposite way, so this would be backwards. And it goes into my coolant filter and then into or from I guess the uh, feed right there so that's something I'll probably have to wait till it gets fully warm and then um, check it just continuously check the bottle and keep a couple extra gallons of distilled water on hand as I uh, drive it the first time so just put my oil in what I'm gonna do is go in the truck and just hit the key work. I hit the key, turn it on, you'll see the fuel spew in here and fill up that bowl as soon as that thing's full, it's ready to rock and roll. Otherwise this would take you forever to start. Well, that wasn't too bad. Oh, man, look at all the bubbles coming out of those holes. So what I'll do is I'll let it sit for a minute. and then, Actually, I'm not even going to let it sit for a minute. I'll, I'll go in there here in just a second and uh, kick it on again. But you get the idea of what I was talking about. So that, those, uh, let's see, where are we looking here? Yeah, that's actually probably just the return or the vent or something, whatever that hose is that goes back to the tank. Well, maybe not. I don't know. That may be the supply. All right, let me go crank it again. All right, that's definitely enough. Um, and it's perfect from inside the cab. You can see right through the gap in the hood and, the, and through the windshield uh, into this spot. So I'll let that die down a little bit and then I'll put the filter on it. So, pretty cool little trick. Uh, man, my gas gauge is off by an eighth of a tank, so I learned the hard way that. And then I also learned how to get this stupid thing started back. I don't know if you guys have ever ran out of fuel or, or done something like this where you empty this fuel bowl. But when you do that, man, it is hard to start. So, uh, I'm probably going to spill stuff everywhere. Or maybe not. I'll get lucky. Um, so this is a trick that I learned. Uh, because otherwise you have to crank and crank and crank forever. And that's how I ended up finding out I needed new batteries a long time ago when I first bought this truck. Back in 08 or 07. 